Welcome! Why, you've arrived in the very nick of time! That is my name, and this is my lady, uh, Michaela Law's story. And this is a romantic visual novel. We are Miss Beaumont, heiress to the Beaumont estate, and we are now 17 years old and are in a steamy affair with our butler, and we're both faceless. So <laughs> let's get this started right now. This is going to be great. And I I've got to be careful with this because apparently there are uh, five different endings to this game. So I could royally screw up this faceless woman's love life right here. But let's 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 find out how I how I do. Before your story can begin, please tell us your name and the name of your and the name of your butler. What is your name? Uh, I am. Um, I am. Uh, Yego Schmidt. What is your butler's name? No, not Alexander. No, 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 no. Not for Yegel Schmidt. Not for Yegel Schmidt. Not good enough. My butler's name is um, Dingleberry. There we go. So you are Yegel Schmidt, and your butler is Dingleberry. Oh, I am so adult. Now, please know that this story was made in Ren P, the visual novel engine, with music composed by Christopher Escalante and voiceover by Bradley Garrett, Hayden De Davia, and Jonah Scott. We sincerely hope you enjoy this short story. Oh, I shall. Achievement unlocked. Game start. Wow. I, I, I'm so good at games. Yeager Schmidt. Life's not fair. Is it? <laughs> I'm going to give her this voice for the entire thing. I just hope you guys know that. I'm not sure what you mean, ma'am. No, yeah, I'm not that. Well, it, it just isn't. A, I have riches and power and practically everything I could possibly want. But I don't at the same time. Ah, you're getting meta... Meta... You're being silly, ma'am. <laughs> This was my life. Whether I like it or not, I was an heiress to a rich family. Splendid, no? To many women, this would have been a dream come true. The perfect way to spend life. However, it wasn't as loving as one would think. Survey! I'm being serious! <laughs> of course you are, of course you are! I'm not saying you aren't! Really? Because I think uh, you just called me silly earlier. You said I was being silly! Aha! My Jaeger Schmidt calls you on that. But I never said not serious, ma'am, did I? Oh, we're getting technical now. You. You. Aha! See, ma'am, I know you're serious. You're just being silly. Shut up! Th there you go again! Sophie was my personal maid, and despite her jokes, she was one of my best friends. She has been with me ever since I was a child, and has cared for me like a sister ever since. If she was with you ever since she was a child, shouldn't she sound a lot older? I don't know. Sophie has gotten me out of trouble so many times, even when I, Jaeger Schmidt, was at fault. It's a surprise that she deals with me. Ah, oh, no, ma'am, don't get... See, I was only fooling. Oh, only fooling? Humph. <laughs> Still, I am right, you know. Life isn't fair. Life is never fair, ma'am. It gives you lemons when you want to make orange juice. That's how the saying goes, right? <laughs> no, it's when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, Sophie. Lemonade, Sophie. But what if I want orange juice? Well, tough titties. That's exactly what I mean. It's not fair. Oh, ma'am, you're not talking about him again, are you? Oh, of course I was. He was all I could think about. All I could talk about. Dingleberry, <laughs> my personal butler. Dingleberry was charming and handsome, sophisticated and sweet. He was practically everything I dreamed of in a man. Yet, despite him being always in arm's reach, he was as far away as could be. 
He was devoted to being the perfect servant, even if that meant disobeying any romantic requests. I let out a sigh and looked to Sophie helplessly. I'm hungry, Sophie. There now, ma'am. Those puppy eyes won't work on me. I already got you an extra tray of biscuit cookies for your morning tea. Well, biscuit cookies? But, <laughs> but Sophie... Uh, 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 uh. None of that now. No whining. Sophie! Ah, uh, fine. I'll make you some fruit sandwiches and tea. Yay. Thank you. Honestly, I spoil you. You love me. Yes, yes, ma'am, I love you. I'll be right back. Now fetch me my food. Sophie left me alone in my room, giving me time to think about Dingleberry while I sat at my study desk. He was barely three years older than I was, yet he acted like a proper gentleman. The way he smiled practically made my legs weak. His voice made my heart sing in long, blissful arias of affection. I was in love with my butler, and I didn't care! The only problem was that he couldn't love me back. Dingleberry was so interested in becoming the perfect servant that he denied any romantic gesture I threw his way. The mere thought of the last failure made me slump in my chair. Life's not fair! Suddenly there were three knocks at my door. I'm brooding! Leave me be! Are you alright, my lady? <gasps> my heart stopped. It was him. Dingleberry! I instantly began to regret my tone. Ah, ah, um, uh, come in! Oh no. The door opened to reveal Dingleberry standing at full attention for me with a tray covered in letters in his hand. He took a step into the room, closed the door behind him, and walked to the front of my desk. My deepest apologies for the interruption, my lady, but I have some letters addressed to you. I came as quick as I received them. Oh, you didn't come quick enough. Oh, oh uh, um, uh, I mean, uh, thank you. Dingleberry gently placed the tray on my desk in front of me, revealing three letters. One had my family's seal, one was pink and practically reeked of flowers, and the last letter was a plain envelope. Envelope, I apologize. Let's look at the, le the, the letter with my seal. I opened the letter gently with my letter opener, taking out the leather parchment, letter parchment, and reading its contents. Dear Jaeger Schmidt, I will be returning home today for my business trip. Please make sure to clean yourself and dress properly for my arrival. Don't show up naked like last time. It's just simply embarrassing. We have much to discuss. Your mother. Your mother is returning. That's wonderful news. Yay! My mother had been on a long business trip that lasted almost two weeks. Most likely she would be staying for a couple days. Then she would be off to another business trip that needed her attention. This was the norm with my mother, being that she single-handedly owned the estate. I had to admit, it was lonely without her. However, when she was around, it was stressful. She demanded perfection out of me beyond anything, hoping that eventually I would become a perfect and proper young woman. I had just turned 17. She was perfect when she turned the age of 13. I apparently had a long way to go. Uh, yes, uh, wonderful. Now for the pink scent. No, no, no. Let's save that for last. I carefully opened the letter with my letter opener and took out the letter parchment. It was surprisingly pure white, despite being in a concealed envelope. I read the parchment's contents aloud. The lady exits the pumpkin carriage, queen to bishop K. K? What kind of joke was this? Who was K? What was this K getting a riddle, at? perhaps? A riddle for what? This must be a mistake. Who sent this? I looked to the envelope for any indication of the sender, but the only thing on the envelope besides for my address and name was a giant K wax seal on the corner. Odd. Now for the pink scented letter. I held my breath and opened the letter with my letter opener, taking out the letter parchment. Why do we have to specify? <laughs> and reading the contents of the note, we know that you're opening it with something that opens letters and something inside a letter is a letter. 
My dear Jaeger Schmidt, my name is Isaac Newport. I know that you do not know me, but I hope to know more about you soon. For you see, I am a Nigerian prince, and I need you to send me money. Please disregard the fact that I cannot spell Nigeria, or royalty, or that this is a red versus blue joke. I am currently in town this weekend and would like to request your presence for tea. Please write back soon, Isaac. Another damn suitor. Ugh! A suitor? I'm afraid I'm unfamiliar with the Newport family. Did I care? I wasn't interested in courting, especially with a man I didn't even know. Besides, the man I wanted to court was in the room with me, and that had already proved to be a difficult challenge as it is. I sighed and placed my hands on the middle of the note, ready to tear it in two. However, Tingleberry stopped me. Miss, I would suggest holding on to that note. Huh? Why? I'm going to turn him down. Still, if you were to visit, you'll have proof and knowledge of who he is rather than forget in the future. Ah, Dingle makes a good point. I sighed and placed the note in one of my drawers to obviously be forgotten about later. I sighed and slumped in my chair. It seems to me I sigh a lot. My mother is returning. I have another damn suitor, and this letter riddle makes absolutely no sense. Today is starting off marvelously. Is there anything I could do to make you happy, my lady? Oh, oh, oh yes. Oh, okay. Uh, should we be forward? Uh, please kiss me. Dingleberry cleared his throat, making me grit my teeth in my closed mouth. I'm afraid I cannot, my lady. Why not? Why? Because I am your butler, you are my lady, it would be improper. Oh, improper. I looked down at my desk. I wanted to protest, but after so many failures, I had practically given up trying to fight his stubbornness. I stood and walked around my desk, wanting some fresh air. Tell Sophie that- Whoa! I s oh, ha, ha, ha. I suddenly felt myself falling, my foot slipping out from underneath me. I quickly grabbed for something and tried to maintain my balance. What I didn't realize was as I grabbed Dingleberry and had pulled him down over top of me. Uh, ow, I... Uh, my lady, are you all right? Uh, yes, I, I, I... Oh, <laughs> I am now. I stared up at Dingleberry, who surprisingly didn't move. I enjoyed this sight a bit too much. How I wished he was open to my affections. However, he continued to stare in concern for my well-being. It was just fine. Especially with him over me like this. Oh, crap. The door opened again, forcing Dingleberry and me to look up towards it. Ah, my brocha. Oh, oh, my. <laughs> this isn't what it looks like. I blushed a deep red. To have him on top of me was one thing. To have Sophie see was another. Oh, dear God, what will happen from here? Well, we shall find out next time. So until next time, my thoughts are with you, wherever you may go.